Okay, here we are with 2.4 examples, part three. So we're gonna continue with example five and cover six, seven, and eight. Um, so in each of these examples, it's the same instructions that I have here. It's just different functions that were given. So it says, find the X value at which F is not continuous. Is the discontinuity removable? Enter none in any unused answer blanks, okay? So one, I have to find what the discontinuity is. They're not giving me a value and asking me if that if there is a discontinuity at that value. I'm left in the dark to hunt and find these um, discontinuities on my own. And it can be done without a graphing calculator. And as mentioned in the... Um, Syllabus, you know, much of the graphing calculator should not be needed while you're doing your work. So, if, for instance, a problem like this were on the test, you should not need a graphing calculator to complete any of these problems. Um, although a graph may help to identify the discontinuity, it is not necessary. Um, we can use prior knowledge to figure out where these discontinuities may be, okay? Um, one of the places that, or one of the ways that we can do that is by considering what the domain of these functions are. Now, going back, you know, because I do go back a little bit to cover domain, we know that from algebra, the domain is usually negative infinity to infinity, unless you have a fraction or what we call a rational function, or you have a radical, what we call square root functions, okay? If you have these two sort of situations, then um, what happens is, is that you have to consider some information to determine what the, um, what the um, domain is. So for instance, for a fraction, we know that the denominator cannot equal zero. And so we get the values to which we'll remove from the typical negative infinity to infinity domain to get our domain for a fraction. And we definitely have some fractions here where we will practice that. Um, the other um, situation that may happen is when you have square roots. And so in that case, you take whatever is inside the square root, it's called a radicand. So the root itself is called a radical. What's inside is called the radicand. And you take the radicand and you set it greater than or equal to zero. Unless, of course, you have the square root in the denominator, then you cannot have the equal, right? And then the last situation we have is trig functions. And so some of them are not always de defined. Um, and so in, in, for certain angles, so you also have to take that into consideration here. But that's a bunch of different um, bits of information. Um, so we'll talk about the domains of the trig functions and all of that when and if we come to those situations. Um, and I'm sure we will at some point in um, this calculus class because we do deal with tangent and tangent does have discontinuities at multiples of pi over 2. So we'll definitely be addressing the trig function domains and ranges a little bit. Um, I do see some in here in example 6, so we'll definitely need to talk about them. Um, so for example 5. First, I want to consider what the domain of this is, and then once I know where it, what my domain is, I'll be able to identify where those discontinuities are, okay? And so, for instance, here, it's just a fraction. So if I take my denominator and I set it not equal to zero, and I solve for x, I get that x cannot equal negative one, which means my domain is from negative infinity to negative one, and then from negative one to infinity, with negative one not being included. That means that there's possibly, or that there is a discontinuity at, um, at negative one. So I automatically know that here is going to be negative one, and then I have to decide whether or not this discontinuity is removable, non-removable, and it definitely won't be the third option, which is no discontinuity. So how do I know if it's removable or non-removable? if you go take a look at the lecture notes removables are when they're just holes and whether or not it's a hole by itself with no other data on that x value or you do have a solid point at somewhere on that x value 
um, so that the function is defined at that x value somewhere. Either of these two cases, if the main graph has a hole, these are considered non-removable. I mean, I'm sorry, removable. The situations where they were non-removable is when there was breaks in the graph or asymptotes, things like that. So um, for this particular problem, we need to see if there is a hole. If there is a hole, um, then it is removable. If there is not a hole and there is an asymptote instead, then it is non-removable. And the graph of this, since the numerator cannot be factored. Um, I cannot reduce the numerator with something in the denominator. Holes exist at those factors which cancel or reduce, okay? And since here I don't have any factors that cancel or reduce, I'm not going to have any removable um, discontinuity, something I could just, you know, cancel out and it's gone, okay? Um, so that is not possible. I do have an asymptote at x equal to negative 1. And so in that case, this is going to be a non-removable um, discontinuity. Okay. So with that, we're going to go ahead and attack these other two fractions. So here, for example, well, we can go to this one next. This is really easy, actually. This is a linear term, right? It's just a line, 3x. And that's, that guy's domain is negative infinity to infinity. And this is sine of x. If you remember from pre-cal, sine of x is just going to be um, a wave function that goes like this, right? It is continuous on negative infinity to infinity. It does not have any continuities. So the domain of this guy is negative infinity to infinity. And if you want the domain of two functions being added together, um, you need to take their intersection. And since this is exactly the same as that, then the domain of f is also negative infinity to infinity. So there are no problems in the domain. There's no numbers that are having to be excluded, which means this one has no discontinuity. So if you do have multiple terms, take into consideration each term's domain and then you're going to take the intersection of those two domains. Basically, where do those two intervals overlap? That is what an intersection is. So if I were to graph negative infinity to infinity on one, graph negative infinity to infinity on another, where do they overlap? They overlap everywhere. And so that's why the domain of f is negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Now here, for example, 7, we have to take our denominator to find the domain and set it equal to zero. I get x equals plus or minus three. So that means my domain is negative infinity to negative three, negative three to three, and then three to infinity. So I have two discontinuities here. I have negative three and I have three. Those are going to be my discontinuities. Now, whether or not they're removable or non-removable depends on if I can cancel one of those factors. So if I factor my original fraction, notice that x plus 3 nor x minus 3 can be um, reduced here. So in both of them stay, which means both of them are vertical asymptotes, which means that these both of these guys are non-removable. Now let's look at the last example. So the last example we have here, in order for us to figure out the domain, we do have to take um, the entire function and set it equal to zero. So if I factor this function, I get x minus or x plus five and x minus one. So I get x equals negative five and x equals positive one. So there are two discontinuities here. There's one at negative five and there's one at positive one, okay? But are they removable or non-removable? So let's take a look at the function. Now I have already factored it. I already know that this factors into this. And then obviously x minus one and x minus one reduce, and so we end up with x plus five. So the fact that x minus one reduced 
is that one is actually a removable discontinuity. But here, once I'm left over with my reduced fraction, I still have a vertical asymptote at negative five, which means negative five is non-removable. And so essentially that's what you're doing. If you're considering the domain, okay, just as a kind of final scope of everything, you're considering the domain, then once you have a domain, you know where the discontinuities are, where, they, where they're happening at, and then it's just a matter of, can you reduce the factor where that discontinuity came from, or is the factor where that discontinuity came from still in the denominator, therefore there's an asymptote there making it non-removable. And then of course, if you have the situation where every piece of your function is continuous completely, then you wouldn't have any discontinuities at all.